Okay, hi everyone. Good afternoon, good evening, wherever, which part of the world you are. Hi. Um, one of the most uh, forgotten topic that seldom discuss is the storage. So let's start. Uh, our topic for today is let's talk storage. How are you backing up your files? It's again, it's one of the most important thing. I've seen a lot of photographers who lost their data. Photographers and friends who lost their data and not properly backing them up. All right, so let's start. Okay, target audience for today is photographers who stores a lot of data, photographers and videographers. Uh, at the end of this topic, I'll be showing our workflow on how we were, how are we doing our backups and the process every process that we do okay uh, guys again uh it would be nice to have interaction please feel free to ask any question anytime i'll try to answer each and every question and hi greg thanks for joining by the way greg is the president of dp greg Dubai Photographers, ah, no, 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 Doha Photographers Club, Shooters Club, there, there, uh, thanks for joining, okay, um, please feel free to, by the way, please add me in social media, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, it's Kelvin Montalbo, it's simple as that, okay, so let me ask you this question, uh, please do answer. How are you backing up your files? So from camera to your hard drive to an external drive, please let me know. DPSC, there. Doha Phot Photographer Shooters Club, correct, Greg? All right. Uh, I was a guest speaker the other day there, and I really had a good time. Okay, so, yeah, let's start this off. Please do answer freely on how you're backing up files. I'll, I have three segments. So I said technically it's the basic, intermediate, and the advanced and how to process or how to back up your files. Okay, let's start off with the basic. Most, let's start off the basic. From camera to laptop. Greg says, oops, sorry, wrong window. Okay, so Doha, yeah, welcome, 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 Greg. Okay, so Isabel is telling me from camera to laptop and to hard drive, which is the basic process on how to back it up. Okay, first, the usual process is from card to your computer, it's internal hard drive, right? Second one is card to computer plus an external hard drive, which is technically, I think everyone is doing it. Um, in, in this case, redundancy is very important. That's that's one of the key component. You have to have two backups of each, right? Because once you lost your data, and that's it. Goodbye for you. So, uh, yeah. Isabel is, is ca from camera to laptop. Marius is from SD to laptop and SD to external card. Yes, okay. Perfect. Okay, so the second one would be the intermediate, which... I'll try to implement. If you're in a tight budget, you would be in this level because it's quite important as well. Okay, so as Marius have said, there's one, there's only one external hard drive, which is technically. Wait, let's go. Let me go back. Sorry. Okay, so, okay, so in this process, there's only one external hard drive, right? Um, I would recommend getting another hard drive to to work it out because it makes more sense to have an extra backup. Uh, in Marius's case, he backs it up in the internal drive and an external drive, so that's okay. Okay, hi Salim, thanks for joining. Uh, Salim is a friend of mine from Pakistan. I met him there when I did a talk. Correct, Salim, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, last gen, last December. Yeah, last December. 
Yeah, uh, he's using a Z50, I remember it right. Okay, so Simon says SD card, SD camera, and external drive, and laptop. Yeah, that's double backup, which is a standard basic, the basic one. Okay, so let's go to the intermediate. Okay, and the intermediate process is uh, technically using a card plus an external RAID 1 hard drive. Okay, I'll explain later what is RAID 1 and why is it important. Okay, so another one is, which is kind of in a more expensive process, which is card plus external RAID 5. With RAID 5, I tend, or RAID 1 or RAID 5, I don't do double backup beca anymore because I'm confident enough to make the... Wait, let me turn off the monitoring here because it's kind of annoying. Okay. Uh, the card, the RAID, I'll just remove the headset now, okay? So the RAID 5 is technically uh, the more important one and the more, it's, it's safer in that sense. RAID 1 is basically a double hard drive, which is technically copying one on one another. I'll explain it further. I'm not used to, sorry. Okay. Uh, guys, please feel free to ask question, okay? So, and let me know where you're from and what sort of photography are you doing as well? Please, please do, okay? So, okay, let me start this off and do a diagram. And my system just didn't work right now for a while. Let me turn it on. have to turn okay let's broadcast this okay so here it goes okay so raid 5 or raid 1 is technically i'll draw it right now so raid 1 would be it's a single hard drive when you purchase it there's a lot there's a lot out there which is sometimes it's uh, you could buy it in any electronic shop and all um, just be aware that when it says four terabyte oops I think the screen is not visible from here okay so let me do it again okay so let me adjust my drawing board okay. raid one which is technically a double hard a single storage with two hard drive in it Okay, so uh, please take note, uh, when you buy, there's, they would write four terabyte, but once you switch it to RAID 1, it will have only two terabyte, because this is technically two, and this is two. Okay, so what will happen in RAID 1 is your data goes duplicates it simply duplicates it it's simple as that it's just whatever your file here where file here file here file here file it just copies it okay so it saves you the time of backing up from your laptop or backing up two hard drives okay if one of the hard drive fails you still have another data on it there's two kinds there's software and hardware based read uh, I would recommend getting the hardware base. Um, when we go to the field and we're s there's like uh, SDE, SDE stands for same, same day edit. But we do bring a RAID hard drive rather than a portable small drive because it's so dangerous when you lose data, especially when you're copying a lot of files. It helps a lot. Okay, so there's a lot in the market that has double, there's RAID 1 on it. So if you have the budget, invest on it, okay? So another one, okay, it's RAID 5. RAID 5 is a more expensive hard drive, but this is the, m a lot of people in the industry in the next level tend to use this one, okay? So I'll show you a diagram again of this one. Okay, next. Okay, so RAID 5. Oops. Uh, by the way, anyone using here RAIDs? 
Okay, RAID 5. RAID 5 is, there's three minimum hard drives on the RAID 5. So the beauty of it is, okay, so we RAID 5. So there's three hard drives. Okay, data is A, B, and saves A, B. C, uh, uh, sorry, C, D. Okay, I have to redo the drawing, sorry. Okay, so I'll make it longer. So minimum, again, there's three hard drives. Okay, um, high rail, uh, Lassie too big. It's at a RAID, RAID 1. Okay, so A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, E, F, E, F. So technically there's a parity. Okay, this and this. Okay, so this backs up this. And this backs up this. So just in case one of the hard drive fails, you still have data. And it's safer in that way. Okay. So hope that's clear on the RAID 5 technology. Uh, we do have RAID 5s, but most of it is uh, five hard drive storage. There once was a company called Drobo. I really, 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 really like those those hard drives. The problem is they sold it to someone, uh, Synology, Synology, I think. They sold it and suddenly, uh, uh, support-wise, uh, it, it sucks technically right now. So we junked all our Drobo and made our own RAID 5. Uh, not made our own, set up our own rather. We purchased an OWC, which is uh, technically a generic, kind of generic brand. So we just buy external drives and put it in there. Okay, RAID 1, yeah. At least you're doing RAID 1. Good job. Uh, okay, I have a question here. Oops. I'm on the folk. Okay, there. Let's just swap this, swap camera. All right. So what's the question? Oh. What do you call an external drive that can read and store files from memory? Sorry. What do you call the external hard drive that can read and store from files from your memory cards directly? Uh, there was once... Uh, the Western Digital has that. I can't remember. But in the office, we call it the, the backupper. We have we, we do purchase that. Uh, I'll I'll look for it. I'll post it here. I can't remember. We have that one. We, but the problem is it was an old SD card, so it can't read the SDHC cards anymore. So what we do is, especially in a big team, of uh, of of if if you have back to back shoot, we do back up using those one. But again, technology is so fast. The SD cards can't be read and read anymore. I'll send you the link later. Okay, so hopes that's clear on the RAID five, and of course the other one. Let's go to advanced. Okay, the advanced one. Uh, again, uh, card to Nash plus LTO. That's another technology. LTO stands. It's basically a tape backup. Okay, another one is card plus external RAID 5 and an LTO. Card to external disk and LTO. I hope I answered your question correctly, Antonio. I, I'm not sure if I answered it. So, but again, I hope I did. All right, so let's discuss this one. Okay, so card RAID LTO. So same technology. The, the, pro, the, the, the difference is we're just using extra backup. Okay, I'll explain to you our workflow on how how we back up our files and how we edit and how we keep all those data securely. Okay, 
So again, please feel free to ask your questions. Okay, so uh, our, uh, okay, the NASH is basically ne network storage. The disadvantage of NASH is, of course, it's passing through network. And network data traffic, if you're, if you're one, if you're the only photographer, then that's easy. But if there's like four photographers in a team and you're dumping a lot of data in the in the network, and that's a nightmare immediately. So, uh, and even though if you have gigabit network, it's still so slow. Okay, not slow in the sense, but it it it, it suffers. It suffers. Okay, so okay, where am I now? Okay, so let me explain. Let me explain the our work our process so so camera again we copy it sd or xqd same goes to the computer goes to the raid then goes to the tape backup once everything is copied simple as that right so that's basically the process uh, who are photographers here and who are videographers in this group? Please hands up. Oh, hi, RJ. Okay. Um, another advantage of having a tape backup is in the long run, it'll cost you less rather having multiple external hard drives okay uh, the the problem with an lto tape is the initial cost is very expensive okay one lto drive is five thousand us dollar um the, that's the main reason that's the ouch that's the that's the one you're gonna feel on the expenses part but if you compute it in the long run it'll be cheaper because one tape would last you 30 years okay so take note one tape 30 years um here's one example of a tape okay so it's a tape storage uh this is i think lto6 an lto6 can hold 6.25 terabyte of data so imagine 6.25 terabyte in one tape um, pros and cons of having a tape. The big advantage is longevity. It, this would last for 30 years. It's really long, okay? Hard drives, external hard drives, would just give you three, five tops, that's it. And that's gonna get busted automatically. By the time, there's there's like a, an expiry date on external hard drives, and please be careful with that, okay? So that's why we go in tape. Yes, it's expensive, but Again, in the long run, it will be cheaper. Okay, I made a computation for that. So an example uh, example is an eight terabyte hard drive, which costs 240 U US dollar. Okay, if you divide it in a per terabyte, that's 30 US dollar per terabyte. Okay, so 30 US dollar per terabyte. If you compute the tape, it's 140 US dollar for a 12 terabyte LTO7, which will give you at least $12 per terabyte. So if you have data like ours, like if you're recording 4K, and if you have a lot of data, then do the math. It will be so expensive in the long run. So even though you think that you're spending not you're spending a little just by buying initial hard drive hard drive hard drive hard drive but if you're in the long run in a business point of view it'll be a lot cheaper investing in a tape backup not that i'm telling you to invest in the tape backup because again our workflow is to, totally different from what you're having right now i think most of us here are single photographer or freelancers so the best solution is you get a, ta hard, uh, a RAID 1 hard drive, which is more secure rather than a single hard drive, okay? I'm not a fan of double backup, 
because there are a lot of discrepancy in 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 that issue hi babar welcome <laughs> thanks for joining okay so i'll show you technically what how we run or how do we back up okay so let's go with our workflow in photography okay so start a new one thanks for joining bro barbar is from dubai um basically one of the crazy fanatic uh nikon user <laughs> all right so where are we now okay so it's here so this is what we do let's start off with photography okay so we're using lightroom so okay computer shall i start from the initial start of backing up and all that oh yeah okay so camera to the computer with a hard drive okay so this is technically our raid 5 hard drive agree with the crazy part yes man where are you storing all those datas uh, your your cameras and your lenses i love your collection of lens by the way okay so we have the raid 5 okay so raid 5 is there backing up everything okay so we'll start editing now so we back up everything's ready okay so we did the tape backup already tape is done okay let's check everything is sorted now so what we do is we have a dropbox uh, we have a dropbox subscription uh, it's the business subscription which is an unlimited storage so okay so the reason why is again it's unlimited storage okay if it's a corporate uh, event or if it's corporate shoot and it's just one photographer or just simple two photographers then sometimes we get away with we don't use this anymore okay so we dump all our photos in dropbox okay uh assuming that you have a fast internet access here we have 100 mb uh, we have 100 mbps same upload and download so it's quite fast so one one event for in four hours that would be like an hour or two to put it in the cloud that's fast okay okay i'll, I'll just what is your best practice organizing your files when you save the hard disk? Do you save files folders certain ways? Yes, I'll go, I'll discuss with that. Technically, this is what I'm discussing right now as well. Okay, so so once we have the Dropbox, okay, so so everything there, everything is there in the Dropbox. So our folder organization goes like this: the month, the day, uh, the, uh, the the year, that's the year the month and the day so two zero zero five two two then the name of the event okay so that's the file structure so every 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 event is documented in a software called monday.com that's our project management software where we could monitor everything uh, this is where we put all our date information on how big are the files, how many files were back up, etc., etc., etc. So, in this folder structure, we have photographer one, which is basically creates a folder one. Photographer two creates another folder. So these are all his files or her files. So it goes in that structure. Okay. So if it's if this is not in Dropbox, this can be in the RAID 5. This could be in the external hard drive. We do this on weddings, only on weddings, because those are huge files on weddings. And again, in corporate, it's small, so we dump it in Dropbox, so it's easier. Okay, so we don't do tape anymore in corporate events, because again, those are, the turnarounds are so fast, and clients, once they, the corporate clients, once they get, the files or the photos that's it not compared to weddings 
bride and groom would look for their photos forever and ever just in case, oh, I lost the file, lost, I lost my photos, could you please copy again? It's that kind of stuff. Okay, so wait, search row. Uh, is my drawing bad or clear? I hope it is. I hope it's clear. Okay, so again, let's go to, um, okay, we're, we're creating now the system, okay? So what I'll do is open Lightroom library, create a Lightroom library. In Lightroom library, it's technically in Dropbox, so it's in cloud. So if you get a subscription of the Creative Cloud, technically it's the same approach if you dump it in Dropbox, but Dropbox is cheaper compared to Creative Cloud. If it's just you, Creative Cloud, go, no issue. But if there's like four editors, it, it, it'll cost more, okay? Again, at the end of the day, it's more of a business point of view rather than convenient, okay? So right now, what I'll what I'm doing right now is we'll, I have a Lightroom library. I'll create the library. Okay, so don't forget to check the smart drive, which is technically the proxy of all these files. It makes it faster to edit as well. So okay, you pick, you edit, la 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 la. Okay, next. Uh, our production team, I'll inform my production team, hey, I've finished editing already. So our production team would log in with her machine and opens her or uh, her computer. Our production team is basically all female. So opens the computer, all my edits, all my files, my Lightroom library is technically sync on her computer already. You see what I mean? So everything is synced already in the computer. So once it, okay, done. So she'll technically fine tune some of the photos, double check my edits or double check some of our editors edit if you might missed out something. So once you have, once you finish, once you finish that one, you just technically export it, okay? Done, finish, send to client. So now you're asking me, there's 16 gig or 64 gig of photos in my Dropbox. The beauty of Dropbox is there's a, a uncheck button like go offline. So what I'll do is check this one. That's like, okay, event 0205.22, go offline. So it deloads the hard drive of my computer already. So everything is in the cloud. I don't have to worry about doing the backup. I don't have to worry about the RAID. I don't have to worry about the tape. So it's there right in the cloud. Plus this is also exported through SmugMug. That's, that's where we upload our files and that's just where we send our client the link for them to download. It's technically uh, an online gallery, password protected. So again, I have two process already. Okay, so I have two systems already in the cloud. Dropbox and SmugMug. Dropbox is technically my raw files. SmugMug is the edited one. So I have everything ready. So I could just remove everything from my computer my production team could re remove that as well as long as, as long as it's finished. Even the Lightroom library is being removed from your computer. So, but the beauty of this is you could still see every project there. It's not just there, it's just in the cloud. That's the beauty of it. Okay, so Isabel is asking if you save your files on Dropbox Drive, Will the quality of photos be reduced or not? No, it's not. It's the same. It's it's in the it's it's let's say it's a virtual hard drive. It's not being compressed. It's not being touched or anything. So no photo reduction. Nothing. By the way, that's a very good question. Okay. 
Okay, so do you have any questions on this diagram? I don't like ah, there's there's storage wise. I like Google Drive because by the way, there, here's a secret in Google Drive. If you dump your photos there, there's a photo detection. It's so awesome in a way that like if you're looking for someone, oh, it'll just show up like me if I, I'm there. I'm like, fuck, every photos in my library is there. But I'm not happy with Google Drive. So that's why we got the Dropbox. Okay, so uh, moving forward, uh, please do ask questions. If you have additional questions, please, please do. Uh, if your subscription in Dropbox with photos goes gone also for from the Dropbox, if your subscription in Dropbox with your photos gone, I'm sorry, uh, I, I don't get it. I think you're referring to if you stop your subscription in Dropbox there, if you stop your subscription in Dropbox, will your photos be gone also from the Dropbox? Uh, yes, definitely. So again, that's an investment. But these are, again, take note, these are not weddings. These are corporate clients, which they don't look for their photos anymore afterwards. I do send them in Dropbox, uh, in Smug Mug already. So everything is there in Smug Mug. Okay, so I hope that was clear. Okay, so all the files dump in Dropbox are just corporate. So it's nothing, in some sense, clients, corporate clients don't look for those. The, the most important part are the ones you exported and everything is in Smug Mug already. Okay, so yeah, this is for corporate. I'll do another one for weddings. Are we clear with this? Shall I proceed? Additional question. There's a 15 seconds to 20 seconds delay, so I'll wait for a little while. Please feel free to ask, guys. Okay, uh, moving forward. Uh, we're good, right? Okay, so in weddings, so technically it's the same process. It's just, okay, I have a question. In your graphics team, we use, in our graphics team, we use Dropbox also for both sharing files and parenting for clients. Yeah, okay, good. All right, so next. Okay, so. Here's what happens on weddings. So same. Uh, all the files are technically in the hard drive, which is our RAID 5. Okay. But here's the difference. All our Lightroom libraries are in Dropbox. Okay, so everything is in the library, the creation, and all that is in Dropbox. This is basically just a storage. We back this up in tape. Okay, why did I put this in green? Yeah, so this is trade, copy. Okay, so how do we export this time? Okay, since this is me on a computer, this is our production team. She has access to the Lightroom library, but she does not have access to the RAID 5 because this is connected to a computer. This is Nash. This is not Nash. So it's not part of the network. I could do share it in some ways, but it will congest. So what we do is, yeah, sometimes we do share it in the network. Sometimes, uh, we do have a docking station. So all the edits, all the files from here, 
are basically copied to an external drive. Okay, so external drive, which is a docking station, which again, it's here. So it's a USB 3 plug, dock, external 3.5, you just dock, copy. Uh, my computer has a docking station also. Her computer has a docking station also. So here's the file, copy, 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 copy. Okay. Why is my Lightroom library in the cloud? Okay. I'll ask myself because that's a common question for the team, for my team. Why are we putting it in the cloud? Why are we not putting an external doc? Okay, so here's the thing. I don't trust the external drop. I don't trust the external doc in a way that what happened was one of the staff was walking, dropped the hard drive. What will happen if a dr hard drive drop? Bye-bye. That's it. Done. Done for the day. Right? So that's the main issue. So if this external doc messes up, I have all my library in the cloud. So I'm still safe. So that's the main reason. So if I put my Lightroom library here and some staff would just drop it or by accident pour water on it and all that, you're done. Okay. It's okay if this messes up because you have everything here. Right? You have everything here in the RAID 5 in your external hard drive. So you just simply copy it. Simple as that. Um, okay. Alex Domingo is, I'm using Mega NZ for file sharing. I'm sure it's better to use. Yeah, I've, you will have 50 to 50. Yeah. I haven't tried Mega NZ. The, the beauty of the, the reason why I use Dropbox is I don't have to do anything. I don't have to drag and drop something if I need to send to client. I don't need to move files. I don't need to technically recopy something to move something. Once I copied it in a Dropbox folder, Dropbox would just automatically sync it. So just in case my internet connection gets cut off, okay, fine. Dropbox will hold. Once it's up again, it will upload automatically without me doing anything. The problem with WeTransfer and all that uh, app softwares or cloud is you upload a very, very big file. Let's say we upload a 50 gig file. You upload a 50 gig file, then suddenly there's an internet interruption. It gets cut off. Bye-bye. That's it. You have to re-upload it. And if it's a super urgent project and everyone's rushing, you can't afford that. You can't afford to have that mistake. So that's the main reason why we use Dropbox. So. For me, putting on cloud so we can easily access that file wherever we are in the world and we can share it to other staff. Yep, exactly. That's the thing. Because when I travel, when I need to edit something and when I need to touch something, everything is online. Um, all my directories, all my files are in the computer, but it's not physically there. So if I have a project, if I need to work on a project, I just technically click those projects that I need, then it will sync, it will re-download it again. So that's the main reason. That's the main difference with Dropbox. The only thing that I hate about Dropbox is the sharing function. For example, there's like five subdirectories sub in that folder and I shared the deep one. So I'll show you an example. So directory structure A, B, C, D. If you share this, you can't share this anymore. So you have to disable this sharing then for you to share this. That's the main issue with Dropbox sharing. Okay, so yeah, uh, that's basically for our weddings. So again, once we upload it, we dump it in Smug Mug and send this to client. And if it's urgent, 
we also send the Dropbox link. We also export it in Dropbox. So, okay, so this is wedding, right? So we do uploaded it, but this is getting from Dropbox. So you, our team would be exporting the files to Dropbox and Dropbox uploads it to SmugMug. Okay, get it? So basically there's two cloud backup for our finished product. Dropbox and cloud are slightly the same. Uh, Dropbox is cloud. It, Dropbox is cloud. Dropbox is just the, the company that we're using. So basically everything is in the cloud. So we transfer is cloud-based. Dropbox is cloud-based. Google, Google Drive is cloud-based. Microsoft has all their cloud applications. Okay, hope that's clear. Um, yeah, uh, just to add up, Alex, um, what uh, another thing why we use Dropbox is I have unlimited storage. So I just dump all my photos there every time. Okay, so hope this clear. Let's move on to video. Uh, any questions on photo? Please feel free. I could go. I could go back anytime. Okay. So. Okay. What happened? Okay. There. So, workflow and video. Again, it's almost similar to photo. It's technically almost similar to photo. Hi, Sammy. Thanks for joining. <laughs> Uh, it's a bit late, but welcome. Thanks for joining. Okay, so our workflow in video is totally different, and it's there's a slight difference as well. Um, if we edit in Adobe Premiere, if it's a small project, then it's Adobe Rush. So, again, same thing, computer. Uh, our files are assets files, PR assets. Uh, sorry about that. Let me write it properly. PR assets are in Dropbox. Same, this is in Dropbox. We copy all our files, our source in the RAID 5 hard drives. Okay, so, whoa, RAID 5. All our storage or all our datas are here in RAID 5. So we copy it, same thing. Same thing as the photos. So we copy all our files here. We copy it in tape backup. Okay, because just in case our RAID 5 messes up, we have a tape. And we could keep them for 30 years or more. Remember that, okay? So from here, we have a dock. So remember this docking station? This is the docking station. So we dock it from there. So we copy. Okay, let me change it to red. So copy files to there. And copy files to here. So we have a docking station where we edit all the files. We never edit in the RAID 5 because that's basically our storage only. We don't do it there. Okay, same. You save all your assets files in Dropbox. So if there's me who needs to review this project, I could log into my Dropbox view it approve it subject for approval and all that and if our production team would get to would need to export it and it's finished already she will get this dropbox put it in her in, put it in her her machine since the asset files are synced already in the cloud and it's automatically copies it on her hard drive, it's easier for us now. So regardless of operating system, Windows or OS X, it doesn't matter because it's same thing. 
It's prim, uh, Adobe Premiere files, so it's easy. Okay, so she will export it. Okay, exports it to Dropbox. Dropbox basically throws it to Vimeo or YouTube or any platform that you wanted. So this link is technically sent to the client prior to editing already. We have that link already. We created that folder already. This link and this link is already sent to the client. So there, sir, there, ma'am. Here, here are the links, uh, review files, uh, up download files, preview files are already there in that link. So you just click it. So what we do is run, run Premiere, export it, go home. Once it's finished, uh, once it finishes uploading, there uh, an email would be sent to us like, ping, it's uploaded. So we'll just send a message to a client to via WhatsApp. It's like, hi guys, uh, your video is finished. Uh, please check on the link provided, the one we send you. So it, it it's efficient enough that clients are like, oh, wow, that was fast. Oh, wow, that was fast. You have the link already. Rather than waiting for the file to upload, then sending it to them, it makes, it's just a waste of time. And sometimes you get to forget. So now all the links are ready, all the, all the downloadable links are ready. All the preview files are ready. Fact, they just click and we're done. So there's no miscommunication in between. No one would tell you, like, you never send it to me. It's already there. Just in case you fall asleep because you're like editing four in the morning, five in the morning, and you like, like you forgot to press the send button in your WhatsApp and informing the client. It's already there. It's in the link already. Okay, so that's the beauty of our workflow. Uh, again, it's not a perfect workflow. I'm not saying that our workflow is perfect. This workflow works for us. And again, we've been doing this for 18 years. We tried to change, we tried to improve, we tried to manipulate every workflow, every possibility to make our work faster. So with this, it made it faster and made it efficient. It made it less error in some sense. Okay, so hope that's clear. Uh, question. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of photographers, so I guess this is not related to you. Not so much related to you guys. So, but again, that's the workflow to video, just in case you're gonna switch to video. Okay, so. Question, any what? Additional question? Um, we're almost done, so. Okay, so. Let's go to Q&A. Okay, question, anyone? Oh, by the way, guys, please follow me to... Please follow me in my Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. I need to monetize this, guys. Please support. <laughs> so I, I, I just started YouTube channel. So it's, it's so hard to create content because everyone is doing it. Everyone is doing the same. I just want it to be different. I want it to be unique in some sense. I don't want to be another YouTuber. That's why it takes me a while to create content because again, I want it different. Okay, so right, thanks Isabel for the kind words. Again, uh, this workflow s works for us because we have a big team and it will work with you if you have a smaller team as well because cloud is the thing right now. It makes it easier and makes it faster and it's safe. You don't want to lose data. I, I, I know someone who basically lost the data of a client in a wedding. He went into prison. So that's it. So please don't do that. Never do that. Because remember those, especially for wedding photographers, those are once in a lifetime moment. You don't want to lose it. If it's just your photo, if you're doing personal shoots and all that, ah, still, it's okay. You're okay with it, but still do back up. And another, while we're waiting for additional questions, um, 
while I'm waiting for additional questions, I'd just uh, like to add up. Okay. You've back up everything. You saved everything. You've set everything. You have tape backup. You have you have all that. But that's technology, right? What if Terminator would happen? All right? So we lose all those data. Agree? What will happen to all those data? All right? So another thing I would I do encourage people is excuse me, uh, print, print your photos. I do print all my photos, 4R, 5R. I do print, 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 print. Those are technology proof, right? So even 10 years from now, 15 years from now, 100 years from now, those photos are gonna last forever, correct? Do you agree? Because data storage and technology would just, you'll lose all those data eventually, 15 years, 20 years from now. The next generation won't be able to see those photos. There might be a possibility, agree? But if you print them, and if you're in, it's on an album, remember your grandparents' photos, you get to see them, you get to flip the page, Look at it, be sentimental with it, right? So it's totally different. So I encourage people to print, 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 print. Print those photos, print those memorable photos. Yes, cloud would be there. It might stay, it might crush forever. What if there's another nuclear attack and all that? You lose all the data, you won't, you won't have that. What am I saying, nuclear attack? And everyone's dead already. <laughs> anyway. Uh, guys, uh, yeah, any more questions, any more, anything you need to ask or anything you need to know, please feel free. Um, yeah, we're good then. Everything's clear. All right. Again, please feel free to ask. Uh, Please do follow me on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook if you can. All right. Uh, thank you, everyone. Um, I guess there's no more question, no? All right. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Hope you enjoyed the session.